So hello everyone, welcome back to PC three zero one, and we are ready with the second session of the day. And we have with us uh, Prakul Kumar Tale from CISPA Helmholtz Center for Information Security, and he will be talking about contraction algorithms. This is the first talk, and it will be followed by uh, another talk on contraction algorithms. So thank you for joining us, uh, Pratik. Over to you now. Thank you. I, I am audible, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thanks for the invitation, and thank you all for tuning in. Um, one logistic issue: somehow my second screen is not working, so I may not be able to see the chat. So feel free to pause at any time and shout or ask the question. If, we, I'll, if there I'll are keep any, a look. I'll keep a check on the chat. I'll let you know yeah. if there's something. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so let's start. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, as since this is an end of uh, quite a long uh, workshop you, most of you have seen this algorithm uh, seen this problem but just for the sake of completeness let me write it down so i'm pretty sure that you have seen vertex cover and feedback vertex set in a multiple settings in a multiple lectures all right so uh, how about minimum filling problem this is uh, this was discussed in open problem session uh, we have edge bipartization which is uh, can we delete at most k edges to get a bipartite graph and finally i'll uh, have a cluster editing so this is uh, pretty much a random uh, list of the problems that are often studied in the parameterized complexity it's again it's not it's clearly not an exhaustive list. It's also clearly not a good representation. So for example, click or independent set, we cannot associate uh, any of these problem with here. But I just wanted to focus on these kind of problems. And I would say that these kind of problems are well studied in parameterized complexity, right? So if we were to look at these problems, we have some operation, some specified operation, and we use this operation, we want to take our graph to some graph classes, right? So if we were to write it in this form, it's like a vertex cover is nothing but can we delete certain edges so that the remaining graph is edgeless? Uh, and a similar classification can be made for, uh, similar characterization can be made for other problems, right? So instead of studying these problem individually or looking at their prop uh, properties, can we abstract? Can we make some abstraction of these problems, right? And these uh, problems fall under the this big umbrella of graph modification problem. So in gra typical uh, graph modification problem, we are given a graph class cal g and, uh, and an integer k. Right? Our parameter is usually k. And of course, we can uh, consider a whole lot of parameters apart from the solution size. But uh, the typical form, the parameter is k. And the question is, can we make at most k modifications in g such that the resulting graph is in CalG. Okay, just to state, CalG is our graph class, and most of the time, um, our interesting graph class has this characterization that in polynomial time, we can recognize whether the resultant graph is in this graph class or not. So it is a polynomial time recognition, uh, recognizable class, right? And more often than not, our modification operations are either vertex deletion, edge deletion, or edge addition, or some combination of these three operation. Uh, but I would say that most, the neglected operation, which I would argue that it's as basic as remaining three operation is of edge contraction. So this talk, this and the next talk would be all about this fourth operation, right? So before going any further, let's see what this operation is and what it isn't, right? So uh, given a graph, the edge contraction has the most intuitive, uh, as as the name suggests, you just take an edge and you collapse its endpoint into each other. Right? What we take care of is that we do not introduce any self loop in this process, nor do we introduce any parallel edges. So all the graphs that we will be talking in this talk or the next talk, you can uh, assume that they are simple graph and any edge operation that we do on them, keep them simple, right? So with this, what we have is like every edge contraction drops the number of vertices by exactly one, whereas the number of edges in graph can drop significantly or can drop by any amount. We do not have a, any uh, upper bound on this C or lower bound on this C, right? Okay, so once again, this is, uh, I mean, 
if not for this definition, the settings would be uh, drastically different. So that's why I just wanted to give another couple of seconds to just stare at it, that we contract an edge, we del or the other way of putting it is delete the two endpoints of this edge, introduce a new vertex and make it adjacent to any vertex which was adjacent to either of these endpoints. Okay, so with this definition in hand, let's define Calgi contraction. Okay, in this setting, again, we have a graph G and an integer K. Our parameter for most of the talk would be uh, this K, which we also call as a solution size. And the question is, can we make at most K contraction in Cal G such that, can we make at most K contractions in G such that the resulting graph is in Cal G? Okay, so just to give you an example, uh, think of a path contraction, tree contraction, wherever a uh, target graph class are set of paths and set of trees respectively. Another example is that, uh, so basically these planar contraction, bipartite contraction, click and split, these are the names which will keep popping up uh, throughout these two lectures. So that I just wanted to give a flavor of how a problem looks like. Okay, right. But uh, this is a standard form of definition and there are various slight variation of this definition, which I will precisely define as and when we need them. But for now, I just wanted to have all the types of definition in one page. So if I'm looking for Cal G contraction, our input is graph G and an integer K and output is, can we contract, uh, can we just get it to any graph in this Cal G? So for example, path contraction, our input will be, our input will be graph G and an integer K. And our objective is key. Our objective is contract at most k edges and give me any path. We don't have any restriction on path, but here we have a restriction on the number of edges that we contract. Right. So similar notion would be largest Cal G contraction. Now here, our the similar problem will look like this. Uh, an instance will only be a graph. Now we do not have any limitation on number of edges, but the, our objective is to get to a largest element in this graph class. Say for example, largest path contraction uh, in this, the, prob, uh, the objective is to get a largest path or to determine the length of largest path to which G can be contracted, okay? We can look at a fixed graph G. In other words, in this case, our graph class uh, has only one element. And the example, which we will discuss a bit in detail, is a P4 contraction. So given a graph G, can we contract it to a path on four vertices? Okay, right. Uh, we can also look at, uh, as we will see shortly, that these problems are very hard. So it is quite natural to consider uh, consider these problems when the input graph is restricted to something, right? So in this case, we'll have, uh, H contraction restricted to another graph class. For example, phi phi contraction when the input is bipartite graph. And the last type of graph classes are something called blocker contraction, which we said that can you contract K edges to remove all the blockers for whatever that block, whatever they are blocking, I mean, it's okay. So these are the types of problem that we generally see in edge contraction. It's again, uh, I won't be doing a lot of formal proofs, but it, it makes sense to keep these definitions in mind or not the definition, just the different types of problems in mind. Okay. So uh, with this, let me state what is an objective uh, of this talk or this and the next talk. So what I want to convey is like edge contraction problems are harder than other graph modification problem. And uh, I would make this as a theme and convey this every possible chance I get like, oh, okay, this is the problem which in other modification settings is much easier for whatever is notion of easier that means. Maybe it's a polynomial uh, uh, versus NP hard or polykernel versus no polykernel or FPT versus W1 hardness. So uh, I would try to reiterate this message that edge contraction problems tends to be much harder than other graph modification problem. Now, the second objective of this talk is to present an overview of the results, the techniques and the difficulties around edge contraction problems. So as we will see, when we look at the literature, uh, what is known about this problem, we'll see that uh, 
there is sometimes there is a theme that emerges oh okay so maybe this if you want to attack one of the problems uh, mentioned in this slide then probably these are the good places to start or at least the previous papers or the previous project found success while going through this project so this is what i mean by techniques also the difficulties as in we will touch upon some reductions just to say that oh if you give me an operation of edge contraction we can encode a lot more difficult problem with a lot of simpler gadgets then we can do it in a vertex deletion or edge deletion setting right and the third objective is to present some open problems which i hope some of you would find interesting and okay right so what would be an outline of this talk uh, first i'll talk about np hardness about np hardness of this edge contraction problems because as we could see that even contracting to a simple graph class turns out the problem turns out to be np hard and i believe that to look at the other difficulty it makes sense to first see why the problem is np hard to begin with right then we will see some fpt algorithms research regarding this kernelization and exact algorithm right so let me give you a detailed overview of the talk so that you know what to expect uh, as it comes right okay uh, in np hardness we'll look at the known results we'll illustrate the difficulty by presenting a proof for p4 contraction it's it's a normal uh, car production but uh, i think it, i think it can be contained in one slide and it's quite illustrative right and then we'll state some open problems in this area right oh we'll look at some fpt algorithms it's again before giving a positive results i just wanted to present one reduction again it's quite simple that it it can be presented in one slide and we'll present that why a uh, cordal contraction is already w2 hard all right then we'll look at some known results and again i'll present some open question a uh, pretty much similar uh, line for kernelization but uh, this part of the slides uh, this part of the talk you can uh, think as an extension of what uh, msr has been doing uh, in the last couple of lectures and we'll see another example of lossy kernel for quick contraction and finally we'll look at some exact algorithms we'll see that look uh, i mean of course we'll see what are the brute force algorithm for click contraction and path contraction but these two all the brute force algorithm differs slightly in their approach also if you look at the positive results uh, we were able to improve the brute force algorithm for path contraction but there is a result which says that brute uh, brute force algorithm for click contraction cannot be improved unless uh, Un unless eth fails right and again we'll state some open problems so uh i i believe that all these four sessions are quite independent of each other apart from the terminologies which i have defined and i will recall them as and when we need in these sections but uh, if i ever lose you in one of the section and and feel free to jump in when the next section start uh, right okay right so let's look at part 1 it's np hardness okay uh just to revisit our uh, definition we have cal calgi contraction and this is what we saw but to state np hardness results it is much more convenient to define look at the calgi look at its forbidden characterization and state the problem in this manner so for for example here i want to specify calf free contraction and how would I, we define this problem is like we have the same input our parameter is same although in np hardness it this probably wouldn't matter and the question is can we make at most k contraction in g to kill all subgraph of g that are in calf so you look at a calf as your graph class it may contain one or more graphs i mean it may be finite or infinite and you look at all the induced copies of graphs in calf in g and now our objective is to kill all these copies by edge contraction okay it's the problem clear right okay so if we look at the list that we had initially we can look at our vertex cover problem here our target graph class was calgi and here we can have a forbidden structure as a p2 path on two vertices if we look at a feedback vertex sets then the objects that we want to kill it's all cycles of length 3 or more like c3 c4 c5 
right similarly for minimum fill in problem we have to kill all the cycles of length c4 c5 and so on uh, all the induced cycles so all these c4 c5 does not have a chord right similarly for edge bipartization and cluster editing right but again uh, this is a list of example where some of the graph classes are simple and finite while others are infinite and we'll see how our edge contraction behaves according to them right okay right so one of the first result as you can expect with a lot of np hardness result appeared in 17 uh, 1970s and 80s it still looks a bit later than other normal res other np hard results that we see and one can prove that if uh, cal f satisfies certain properties then cal f free contraction is np hard right this was their result it's uh, again not a dichotomy it just says that if cal f satisfies certain properties then it's then killing all the induced subgraph in cal f it's np hard uh, killing them by edge contraction okay so i don't want to specify these results because it gets quite lengthy i mean the properties which they mention are simple but uh, i believe it doesn't serve the purpose in a bigger picture right also this result was uh, in 1983 this result was strengthened and they proved that calf free contraction is np hard if calf satisfies certain even relaxed properties right again instead of stating what these properties are we can just look at the implication of uh, this research and it says that tree contraction cactus contraction planar i mean this list of problems is already np hard so since 1983 which is known that the problems which are of interest to us some of them are already np uh, complete and then we'll see where other problems fell right okay in 1987 brower and weltman proved that i mean let's not worry about what properties calf have and how easy they are even if your graph the graph class is just one graph which is a p4 then contracting to it is np hard right so given a graph can i contract it to a p4 we it's already np hard to determine this is now imagine uh, think of the other operations say for example vertex deletion if you have a vertex deletion then this problem is already polynomial time solvable all you have to do is find a induced p4 or uh, yeah find an induced p4 and just delete every other uh, vertex in the graph right so you change an operation from vertex deletion to edge contraction and even the simplest problems become np hard right uh, we'll come back to this results in a while but uh, in 2002 hammock proved that contracting to uh, i mean largest cycle contraction is already np hard so you want to determine what is the length of the largest cycle to which we, you can contract your graph it already becomes np hard right now uh, there is a series of results it's again a click contraction uh, so click contraction uh, as we will see in the future talk has also it's very closely or in fact it's just renaming of uh, hedwinger number which has been very well studied in maths and structural graph theory and surprisingly it was not known until 2009 that click contraction whether it's np hard or not which uh, epstein give a very uh, nice and elegant proof right uh, and after from 2011 lot of uh, people started working in parameterized complexity or uh, around edge contraction problem and a lot of results followed so in 2011 golovich atl proved that if you want to contract khs such that in the resulting graph minimum degree is at least 14 now this magic 14 number comes from the reduction then this problem is already np hard we had a similar result for max degree but to contract it to a max degree of at most 2 so for example you are given a graph either you want to convert it into a cycle or a path or a collection of cycles and a path this problem is already np hard and uh, in this line finally we were uh, in this year we were able to prove that if you are given a graph g and you want to contract it to a grid this problem is already np hard this is also uh, i wanted to put this small results in the side to highlight that we still do not have a, a big hammer for edge contraction to determine whether edge contraction is np hard or not so every problem which is of to interest to you we just have to go back and start from the np hardness reduction of that problem before we prove any other fpt or exact uh, 
results sorry right okay so uh, let's look at the np hardness of p4 contraction as i said it's easier and can be presented in one slide so let's have a look at those right so what does it mean by that g can be contracted to a p4 right we can look at g right what we have to do it's partition into these four parts right and these four parts think of intuitively that these four parts will correspond to the four vertices in the final solution right and uh, these each of this needs to be connected for that and we should allow certain types of edges right? so let me write it down so g can be contracted to p4 if and only if each wi is connected right and our partition okay so partition should have this property each part is connected and we only allow the edges which are of green type in this figure and there should not be an uh, edge of red type here all right so in the next slide i am i'll slightly abuse the notation and already start using w1 w2 w3 and w4 without explicitly defining but the intuition is given a graph g can we can we come up with this partition which satisfy these things right okay uh, okay yeah uh, before going to the reduction let's look at a sat as we all know uh, the in sat the problem is find an assignment of variables such that ev in for every clause at least one of its literal is set to true right we'll start with a variation of sat called not all equal sat in which our basic objective is same which is there for sat but we have an additional constraint say, which says that all of its literals are not set to true so look at a clause we need at least one of the literals set to true but we don't allow the situation where all of its literals are set to true okay and it was known that not all equal 3 sat is np hard and cannot be solved in 2 power little of n plus m unless eth fail here n and m are number of variables and clauses respectively okay right so let's look at this reduction uh, what i would say is let's start with a formula not all equal sat right and add two copies of clauses in our case we, that would be let's rename them as w3 and w4 which again intuitively i want all these vertices to end up uh, in the second vertex in the resulting p4 and similarly for w3 i want all these vertices to end up in the third vertex in the p4 that we are aiming for right now what we need we add two holders like so this look at the vertex corresponds to w1 and we'll make it adjacent to all the vertices in w2 right and similarly we add a vertex which would be our set w4 uh, and that would be a singleton set and we'll make them adjacent to all the vertices in w3 right now what we can do uh, we add all the one vertex for each variable and convert it into a click right for each variable x and a clause c right if x uh, makes clause c if if setting x equal to true satisfy clause c then we add an edge x comma c2 now c2 is a copy of clause c in set w2 right and similarly we add an edge x comma c3 if setting x is equal to true does not satisfy c right and this is uh, and this is it this is our construction right so uh, again a uh, there are some technicalities which we make sure that uh, w1 doesn't collapse to w2 but the basic idea is this right now what is happening our objective is to make w2 and w3 connected again because of the technicalities which i didn't mention we we can assume that the vertex in w1 cannot provide connectivity to w2 right otherwise it can just collapse and everything in w2 is connected right so we have to partition these variables such that part of one part of them can provides connectivity to w2 and another parts provide connectivity to w3 right and what it into what we are uh, if if that happens then we know that we are getting our p4 right because w1 is connected w as it's a singleton vertex a uh, singleton set and w2 and w3 are connected because of this nice partition which we could if we could get it out of variables 
right so what happens it's like w2 collects all the variables that are set to true right and similarly w3 collects all the variables that are set to false right now since w2 and w3 contains copies of all the clauses we can say that for every clause uh, some literal is set to true and some literal is set to false right and and this is this is the reduction uh, for p4 contraction right so what we can say is p4 contraction is np hard in general graph we also know that it's not np hard we cannot even get like a sub exponential time algorithm for this problem so even in that range unless eth fails you cannot do it anything better than 2 power n right so here n is the number of vertices in the graph right okay um uh, right so this was the result so this is not the exact reduction in uh, brower and weldman's paper but uh, i just find it easier to present it in not all equal sat uh, terms right now that people realize that oh even contracting to p4 is a and p hard people start looking at the restricted graph classes so in 2009 van holf and etl proved that even even if graph is p6 free even if there is no induced p6 in the graph the problem still remains np hard which essentially is the same reduction as we have seen they just analyzed it more carefully right and then there was a series of uh, papers which proved that oh even this restricted graph classes contracting it to p7 or p6 or p5 remains np hard right so this is the line of this thing and finally i think this year's isaac uh, kern and polusma proved that uh, gave a complete dichotomy of this problem like longest path contraction so you look now look at the input graph look at its restriction and say that oh if input graph satisfies certain things then longest path contraction problem is np hard otherwise it is polynomial time solvable so this was the state for again just a p5 uh, contracting it to a path and again, just because this problem is not very well understood people i think the most of the efforts are still put in the some p5 p4 p6 contraction right prateek okay. uh, yeah yeah mingrish just can you maybe i missed it if you said what does longest path contraction mean ah okay so uh, in the longest path contraction our input is graph g right and i'm asking what is the length of longest path to which g can be contracted so here i do not have i don't worry about the how many edges do i contract which is again a complement parameter is just uh can you give me the length of longest path to which g can be contracted and so what is the parameter here or uh, it's, it's talking about np hard okay uh, i'm just talking about np hardness right uh, again the length of the path uh, i mean thanks for this question but length of the path cannot be parameter here right because even for like yeah. a constant path length we already have uh, we already have this np hardness result okay is that okay yeah thank you okay so uh, i just wanted to mention the question which uh, which are already specified in these papers and uh, they do form this gap in our understanding of how this contraction are at the boundary cases right so in the same paper uh, they prove that if we want to contract it to the p4 and the input is clophy graph then it's polynomial time right and they they asked what would be the complexity of p6 contraction and p5 contraction on clophy graph right uh, higernes etl uh, when they prove that uh, p6 contraction on bipartite graph is np hard they prove that longest path problem on cordal graph it's polynomial time right so uh, what they ask is like what happens to the cordal bipartite graph it's again uh, cordal bipartite graphs are not cordal graphs so it's a slightly misleading name but uh, this so the result for cordal graph doesn't imply to the problem 1.2 that is mentioned here right and now we have a problem 1.3 can we have a p4 contraction on bipartite graph because if you look at the construction it looked almost bipartite but it's still because of the click which was formed on the variable uh, it it deviates from being a bipartite graph right okay so uh, this is yeah okay so before closing this np hard uh, portion of the talks uh, i just want to mention under the types of problem which in literature are called blocker contraction so these problems is like we are given graph g 
integers k and d and some major is fixed or maybe you can think of this major is already fixed and is a part of a problem right uh, again our parameter is uh, sorry uh, it should be k and d and our question is can we make at most k contraction to reduce the major of g by at least d right i'll i'll just uh, make it more concrete so think of a parameter as any of this thing like the size of minimum vertex cover or feedback vertex set or oct or dominating set or the parameters could be size of maximum click or independent set right and and another one of the earlier studied parameter was a chromatic number right so the uh, what we can say that these types of questions are even hard even for constant values of k comma d and there are a lot of questions open which still ask for the np hardness or fpt algorithms in this domain but uh, instead of mentioning this question i'll mention the latest reference in this line of the work which was uh, i think mscs paper this year by uh, poloma and her co-authors he says that it is co np hard to determine whether we can contract one edge and to reduce the feedback vertex set by one right so it's even k and d are equal to one this problem is already co np hard and those people state these results in more generic form but again for the purpose of this talk it is uh, the, the point being even for constant values of k and d these problems are hard right okay so this finishes part one uh, is there any questions or we can just okay still have oh, 25 minutes okay ah uh, yeah uh, so in the second part uh, we'll look at some fpt algorithms and uh, this is the outline which i promised so let's look at this thing but uh, before going jumping into an edge contraction problem let's see what we know about graph modification problems when other modification problems are allowed so we can ask the similar kind of questions in edge contraction setting right now what we know it, it's again the same list of problems that we have mentioned before uh, and again i want to specify instead of calg modification i want to say calf free modifications and what we know about this so uh, as most of you know in 1996 kai's research says that if look at a calf if it is bounded right and our modification prop uh, modification operations are vertex deletion edge deletion or edge addition then calf free modification problem is already fpt right so because of this results we already uh, it's already implied that vertex cover it's fixed parameter tractable because see calf in this case it's just an edge right similarly cluster vertex editing in this case calf was only an induced p3 right and our uh, operation was second and third uh, sorry in cluster vertex editing it was second and third while in vertex cover it was first operation right so uh, because of this so to say meta theorem we already got these fpt results right so we also know that when calf is infinite right and our edit operations it's one two or three then calf free modification problems are fpt this i mean i cannot state it as a theorem but we know certain example which falls into this category right so look at for example minimum filling uh, right here calf was set off all the paths uh, all the cycles of length four and more right and we know that this problem has uh, uh, like it is fpt when parameterized by k in fact it also has a sub exponential time algorithm right uh, the similar case with the edge bipartization here calf was set off all the odd cycles and even if calf was infinite we did get an fpt algorithm for this type of problems right so we can ask a similar question look at a calf free modification when only fourth uh, when only fourth modification operation is allowed like only edge contraction allowed is allowed and the question is can we have a generic theorem as that of kai 19 uh, which as of kai's right and the answer is no and this was proved in 2023 by uh of uh, neil and saket and kai and kao uh, and they proved that c4 free edge contraction it's w2 hard again uh they put more generic result uh, they they're statement of their results it's in more generic form but again for the purposes of talk let's look at the c4 free so the we are given a graph and the objective is kill all the induced c4 
right? So can we do that in FPT time? And as you can see, the answer is no. Again, uh, this reduction gives an insight of what we can achieve with this setting. So we'll look at the reduction here, All right? And their reduction started from red blue dominating set. Uh, is there something in the chat? Ah, uh, okay. I think I missed something. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, just the yeah. citation part. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Okay. Ah, oh, nah. Okay. So we can start with the red blue dominating set. And our input is graph G. It's, you know, the one we have the red part and the blue part. And the question is, does there exist a set of at most K vertices in R that dominates B? Right. And as we know, red blue dominating set parameterized by K is W2 hard. Right. Again, let's start with this and let's look at a quick reduction from how can we start from here and get to a C4 free killing. Oops killing C4, uh, all this induced C4 in this graph, right? So this is our construction. Uh, let's start with the original graph, which has red and blue vertices, right? Add a vertex W and convert R plus W into a click, right? Now, for every blue vertex, we create this yellow C4, and this is very uh, specific to every blue vertex. And this is it. This is our construction, right? OK, uh, so what is what do we see so one way of killing and induce c4 is to introduce a core between this vertex w and the corresponding blue vertex right and how can we introduce this chord we can pick one of the red vertex and contract it into a w right now our objective is can we introduce a chord for all the cycle corresponding to blue vertices with only kh contraction now this is exactly same at selecting K vertices in the red part, which dominates all of the blue vertices, right? So I hope uh, this correspondence between these two problems, it's clear, right? Okay. Yeah, so what does it imply? It implies that C4 free, if you just want to kill all the C4s, then the problem is already W2 hard, right? As a corollary, they say that the caudal contract, uh, we can say that the caudal contraction parameterized by W2, uh, parameterized by K is already W2 hard, right? So similar result of uh, Akanksha Agarwal and I mean, you know, the, uh, Daniel Saket and Mehra of proved in 2017 that the split contraction is W1 hard. And this is a very non-trivial reduction. I mean, I, at least I couldn't think of presenting it in a one or two slides. I mean, it. It's a non-trivial reduction, right? And uh, uh, so, so another research in this line was already known since 2011, which says that uh, Petr Golovich and ATL proved that if you want to contract, uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to get to a graph whose minimum degree is above your threshold, and the parameter is only k, then the problem is W1 hard. Right. Similarly, uh, in 2013, Belmont ATL proved that if you want to contract certain edges such that the maximum degree of your graph is below certain threshold, parameterized by K is already W2 hard. Right. So what I wanted to highlight here is like it is not easy to kill even the simple obstructions. Right. So in case of uh, split contraction, we had a very simple obstruction like C3, C4 and 2K2. In case of minimum degree or max degree, it is very easy to find those obstructions, right? And it's still hard to kill those obstructions without having some additional parameter at hand, right? So it's again, uh, I just wanted to put it as an intuitive reason and because this slide is more of a opinion rather than a fact, right? So what I would do is like branching uh, doesn't work most of the time or iterative compression doesn't work. These are the two techniques that most often, these are the first two techniques which we try to do to determine whether a problem is FPT or not. But again, just to, uh, so that people don't quote me, I would just want to highlight that most of the cases branching doesn't work. And this is the reason is if you look at our reduction an obstruction uh, and look at this yellow cycle. So we kill this yellow cycle without actually contracting any edge of color, uh, any edge which is yellow, right? So obstruction can be killed without contracting an edge which participates in it. And that's why most of the time 
branching doesn't work, right? When it comes to iterative compression, I think one of the first litmus tests that we can check is like, if, a, if an intermediate instance is a no instance, maybe we should be able to say that even the larger instance is no, but this doesn't necessarily ha happens in edge contraction problem. So look at if H is a subgraph of G, then H comma K is a no instance does not necessarily imply G comma K is a no instance because it might happen that the vertices, which we do not see yet, might bring a lot of connectivity. So this is again a thing which it's probably just to say that these techniques, which often works for most of the other modification problem doesn't work in edge contraction. Right. Okay. So this is the picture we had so far. We see that oh, the caudal contraction is W2 hard, split contraction is W1 hard. We had a similar prob uh, problem for max degree and min degree, right? But in spite of this difficulty, there are a lot of problems that are known to be uh, in FPT, right? And this is, again, some list of problems, uh, a representative. Right. Uh, again, just to say that when I say max degree at most T is in FPT, here the parameter is D and K, right? But not to be confused with the max degree at most D, which is which I put in a W2, uh, I mean, outside W1, right? Okay. Now let's look at some positive results uh, in edge contraction, right? So uh, before looking into these results, this is a generic observation which keeps popping every now and then. It's like if we can kill all the abstraction by contracting at most k edges, then all those abstractions can be killed by deleting at most 2k vertices. And those 2k vertices will exactly be the endpoints of edges that you contracted to kill, uh, contracted to kill all these obstructions, right? So what I'm trying to convey here is this, if g comma k is a yes instance of tree contraction, like you contract k edges and there is no more cycle in the graph, then you, instead of contracting that edge, you can just delete its endpoint and you will still end up with no cycle in this graph, right? So G comma K is a yes instance of tree contraction. This implies G comma 2K is a yes instance of feedback vertex set. And uh, most of the time it's it's implied only in one direction. The reverse implication may not hold, right? Okay, uh, another example would be if G comma K is a yes instance of bipartite contraction, this implies G comma 2K is a yes instance of or cycle transfers, right? And we'll see uh, this problem, uh, this small observation plays a crucial role, right? Okay, so to the best of our knowledge, the first time uh, this these problems have been studied in FPT in parameterized setting was by uh, Pinari Gernes NTL in 2011. And they proved that tree contraction and path contraction are FPT when parameterized by K. And their idea was, uh, is the same as like if it is a yes instance, we should be able to find a vertex set X, which is of size 2K, and deleting that will give us a forest, right? If we analyze it more and uh, do this thing, uh, I mean, a little more technical work, we can prove that X also has to be a connected vertex cover of this entire graph, right? And because of this, the objective becomes, can we find some special connected vertex cover and it's partition so that if you contract this partition, you end up getting a tree, right? So basically this algorithm comprises of random separation techniques, which I guess you have seen at a couple of uh, lectures already, plus an algorithm for connected vertex cover. So this would be an overview of an algorithm for tree contraction, right? Uh, we were able to imp uh, use these results and improve it to two classes of graphs, which are which are a super set of trees. One of them would be if you are allow some cycles in the graph, like your final graph has to be a tree plus certain edges, then the similar kind of algorithm will work. And another generalization would be a cactus, as you can see that. Uh, so the cactus is a graph where each cycle is a part of, at mo each edge is a part of at most one cycle. So using the techniques, uh, using the ideas from this work, with a lot more technical uh, analysis over it on the top of it, we were able to prove such result for cactus contraction. Right. Okay. Uh, so now the idea is I can just go over uh, these, the very bird's eye view of the types of algorithms and the ideas are used uh, to prove FPT result. And maybe at the end, I'll present one FPT algorithm for a pro problem 
of maximum degree atmosphere. Okay, yeah, let's go. So I'll just quickly uh, again Golovich uh, TL. It was known that the planar contraction is FPT, but the running time is only f of k because uh, okay I, i'll see it's a, so the similar ideas they use that if it is a g instance you can delete at most 2k vertices and the remaining graph is almost a planar graph right and again the arguments they use are quite close to the planar vertex deletion problem and basically what they do is they analyze certain things they mark certain things and they say that now we can find an irrelevant edge to contract and once you can Either you can find an irrelevant edge to contract, or the tree width is bounded. In that case, you can uh, use Grissel's theorem to uh, prove its FPT. And that's why this f of k is not explicit. Right. Uh, again, um, Gonlevente and Marx uh, in 2013 proved that bipartite contraction is FPT. Again, with the similar ideas, they say that if it is an ES instance, maybe we can find a set X. Uh, of size at most 2k, whose deletion already gives you a bipartite graph, all right? And again, as in case of OCT, the objective is to find a separator between x1 and x2 that has a spanning forest with k edges. So uh, usually the second case is uh, not there in the OCT, but in edge contraction, we have this additional constraint. And they say that we even with this additional constraint, we can still somehow manage to solve this, all right? Uh, let's go to the click contraction because we'll revisit this problem. Again, the similar ideas where we have set X and Y. We say that uh, if set X is of size at most 2K and if you delete it, Y is already a click, all right? And what their FPT algorithm does is that the guesses, the edges in X, now we can afford this in FPT time, that are in solution, right? And for every such guess, they prove that there is a small set Y prime of A uh, y prime of y, which is of our interest to us. And that set has a size almost order k. So again, we can branch on the edges across x and this y prime and the edges in y prime to give us this algorithm for click contraction. Uh, so, yeah. OK. Um, and this year, uh, what we were able to prove that the grid contraction is also FPT when parameterized by k. But I just wanted to highlight that uh, here we do a dp over interesting connected subgraph and uh, this at least i would uh, argue that this is believe, uh, this is slightly different than the other methods uh, to prove the fpt of the calgi contraction All right okay so this was uh, all right. oh, i think we have one more yeah uh, so this is the last problem where i'll just present an overview and maybe we can look at the detailed fpt algorithm for one of this thing All right uh, if we were to contract k edges to increase the minimum degree of a graph will over certain threshold. This was one problem. And Belmonte studied that you want to contract the edges such that the maximum degree is at most t, at most to your certain threshold. Right? So in the first case, it is easy to argue that if there is a vertex of degree strictly less than t, the only way to get rid of this vertex is to contract it to one of its neighbor. Right? So at least one of the edge incident on it is in the solution. So that is a simple D way branching, and that's why we get like D power K algorithm in this case, right? In case of maximum degree at most D, what we were able to, uh, what, there is a simple observation that in a yes instant, the max degree of G is at most K plus D, right? So for every vertex of degree strictly greater than D, uh, at least one of the edge incident on its close neighborhood should be in a solution. And that presents us with, uh, this leads us to, k plus t square way branching. So this is again not effective, but this is the simple branching that gives us the way. Right. OK. So uh, in the remaining time, which I have like eight minutes, 10 minutes, uh, how much time do I have left? Yeah, you have another uh, 11, no, okay, nine minutes. Yes. Okay, sure, I'll try to uh, drink this, thing, right? Okay, so uh, what we have, uh, so instead of just giving, uh, uh, just mentioning the methods that are used in the contraction algorithm, in this last problem, I just wanted to give an overview of the procedure, like just to uh, give a flavor of the kind of arguments that are, uh, that can work in the edge contraction problem, right? So to define a problem, uh, 
this is our problem maximum a degree contraction our input is graph g an integer is k comma d our parameter is k plus d right and the question is can we can contract at most k edges in g such that the resulting graph has a maximum degree at most d all right so uh, as we have seen this uh, from 2013 there was already an algorithm known which runs in k power log k into d uh, this year oh, sorry it's not 13 it's this year this year we were uh, able to present an algorithm which runs in exponential in k comma d now notice that uh, these two algorithms are not exactly comparable because if d is quite large the above algorithm works much faster but this problem remains np hard even for constant values of d so even when d is equal to 2 this problem is already np hard so when d is constant uh, the second algorithm runs faster than the first algorithm right okay all right so uh, again uh, before going to an algorithm let's look at the properties that we have with this edge contraction right and we can see that the maximum degree contraction this problem is same as partitioning v of g such that each part which we call witness set is connected right and any witness set is adjacent with at most the other uh, witness sets so think of witness sets is a since it's connected it will be collapsed into a single vertex and now that since it's adjacent to at most d of those all its degree in the final graph would be at most d all right so let's look at this toy example right so uh, one of the solution uh, say our object our budget is five, so can we contract five edges and reduce the degree to at most three? So one of the solution is I contract these green edges, which is mentioned here, to get to this graph. Right. So here the red circles are called witness sets, or those will be called big witness sets, and then there is a singleton witness set which doesn't really cost. So we only have to worry about these big witness sets, which will take at least one from our budget. Okay. All right. So if we look at this thing, if we look at the first property and we consider the solution size, which is our parameter, then we know that there are at most 2k vertices in big witness sets. All right. Whereas if we look at the second property and we know that our solution size is at most k, then we know that there are at most k into d vertices that are adjacent to big witness set. Notice that since our budget is k and each big witness set cost at least one edge to us, there can be at most k big witness sets. And since they are adjacent to at most d other vertices, we have k into d vertices that are adjacent to big witness sets, right? So this is a good starting point. And if someone gives us a two coloring of V of g, that satisfies this following properties that all the two k vertices in big witness sets are colored red and all KD vertices that are adjacent to big witness sets are colored blue, then we are done. Basically, our objective is to find this thing. So here we can just go and take a spanning forest of all the red connected components, and that would be our solution, right? But again, uh, this hypothetical solution, uh, this look at the hypothetical solution hints us that we might be able to use n comma 2k plus tk universal set, right? So again, I'll quickly give a working definition of n comma two k plus t k universal set. So it's a collection of polynomial, uh, collection of two colorings of V of G, where the size of this coloring is exponential in k t, but polynomial in n log n, which again in in the world of parameterized complexity we can afford, right? And we say that for any set X of size two k plus t k, and any of its partition x one x two, there is a coloring that is compatible with it. What do I mean? Uh, what do I mean by compatible? Oops, sorry. I'd say that all the vertices in X1 are colored red and all the vertices in X2 are colored blue, right? Okay, so here X1 could be our vertices in big witness sets and X2 could be our vertices that are adjacent to big witness sets, right? But what, what this coloring can give is it can give us to some bad red colored components. So these are the colored components which satisfy these properties, but uh, there is no big witness set content in it. Okay, all right. So uh, again, the definition of bad red connected components are those are the one which do not see any big witness set. Right? And now with this coloring, with the guarantee on this coloring, our objective is uh, the solving maximum degree contraction is same as saying, can you uh, 
given a compatible two coloring can we distinguish between good red connected com components versus bad red connected components right and yeah so if you fix a hypothetical solution we know that uh, look at an x1 which is all the endpoints of these edges and x2 which is a neighborhood of this right now that we know that the our hypothetical solution has size at most k we know that our x1 is of size at most 2k and x2 is of size k into d right so one of our red coloring uh, one of our two coloring in this n comma 2k plus dk in your cell set is compatible with x1 and x2 right okay so as mentioned before given a compatible two coloring the objective remains to distinguish good red parts from bad red parts and for that we use the structural properties of the problem which we say that any witness set is com completely in red part right so for example we cannot have this dotted red circle on the left of corner like a witness set cannot go out of a red part and then come take something else right we also know that any red part is either a union of witness sets or it doesn't interact with any witness set so for example it cannot happen that look at this red part containing w1 and w2 it cannot happen that w1 is a big witness set and w2 isn't right and the third property that we can deduce it's again may not be that obvious at this point is like any vertex which is in blue part can see at most d parts and not more right so this kind of situation doesn't happen right so for example here uh, the, it has a degree five, and we can only drop it to four by contracting two red parts which are encircled by the same blue part. Right. Okay, so with this property in hand, we have a simple branching algorithm. It says that if u is in red part uh, and its degree is more than d plus one, then you just contract that part. Otherwise, if u is in blue part, then branch over all the two power D possibilities of neighborhood of that guy, which might contain a big witness set. Uh, and as we can see, the major K drops in each case. Right. So the running time of this type of algorithm would be the size of our universal set into the branching factor that we would occur. And again, it is both of these are single exponent in K comma D. Right. So with this, we can say that the max degree contraction admits an algorithm that runnings in exponential k comma t or single exponential in k into t okay right so uh, this is a nice slide of this section um, to state some open problems so when we uh, as you recall the first result was about tree contraction and this was a long result in 2011 so when we started working on this we said that okay can we generalize this result to some class which is a super class of trees and we had a success with cactus contraction right but uh, can we look at other generalization of g can we say for example can we look at outer planar contraction can is it possible to have an fpt algorithm in single exponential time because these problems are fpt because of this heavy hammers of crusell's theorem but uh, can we have a single exponential time algorithm right similarly to generalize both cactus and outer planar graph can we have an algorithm when our target graph class its collection of all the graphs whose tree width is at most two I think that would be an interesting and challenging open problem. And the third problem, which is just wanted to state because it has been quoted quite often, uh, what do we know about inter, oh, sorry, it's an interval graph contraction. Are those problems F, is this problem FPT or not? Right. So I think with this, I'll conclude this session and, uh, uh, sorry, not the session, the this talk. Thank you yeah, so any much. Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the talk.